Hey guys, thank you for stopping by again. We have a great show for you, but before we get started, I'd like to give a quick moment to our sponsor, Species Nutrition. It's some of the best supplements around. Personally, my favorite, it's the protein, the isolized protein, and it's high quality, the highest you can get, completely lactose free, so it's not going to bother your stomach, and it's some of the best tasting protein that I've ever had. But don't just stop there because they've got other products as well, a slew of them. I mean, they have a fat burner that doesn't work on stimulants, Lipolize, go check it out. It's one of the only products around that is a fat burner that's not working by speeding up your heart rate. We all know speeding up your heart rate is not the way to go when you're trying to lose body fat, um, especially when we're talking about artificially. It's not like you're stand, running on a treadmill, you're taking something. So you definitely don't want to speed up your heart rate. This completely bypasses that way of burning body fat. This is the way you're actually supposed to do it. They have a sleep aid if you're having trouble sleeping. I mean, they have a bunch of stuff. Again, my personal favorite is the protein. It's what I've been using for years. I use a lot of their products for many years, and I definitely give my stamp of approval. If you guys want to get a little bit off of it, um, some percentages off, that'd be great. And the way you can do that is by putting in my promo code ARMIN25 to get 25% off. Definitely, guys, go check it out. It's speciesnutrition.com, and I know they're running a Black Friday sale um, that's going to be more percentages off, so definitely go check it out today. Uh, this podcast is going to go up on Friday, and it is Black Friday, so once you listen to it, go ahead to speciesnutrition.com. Today we have a great guest. Uh, his name is Dr. Win Chang. He's the innovator and uh, the CEO, the owner of a product called the Shoulder Sphere. You might have seen it. A lot of athletes are using it, and it's completely different from the thinking on how to strengthen and recover your shoulder from years past. So really enjoyed talking to this man. He's wonderful uh, with explaining what actually happens uh, when someone is injured and with the recovery process, and we go down some tangents as well. I hope you guys enjoy and welcome Dr. Win Chang. Hey, so how was your morning? Did you did you just get up or? Excellent. I'm always an early riser, and yeah. God bless you. you're an early or even earlier. You're in Tennessee, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's. Uh, what is it? What is it? What time is it? Yeah, seven. I think it's seven. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's, it's, yeah, uh, this seven. is a motivational motivational week because of all the holidays. Uh, I'm curious on like how you got into shoulder work and shoulder surgery initially. My training as a background has been an orthopedic surgeon. I have always mm -hmm. uh, been a person of science and. Uh, all my training in high school, college uh, days were involved with the technology and research. So uh, mm -hmm. my dad was an engineer, so I kind of like to build things. And uh, okay. made a combination of many interests. And then uh, it led to uh, serendipity to this particular discovery. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, soldier surgery is, is uh, huge. I mean, it seems like everybody that... I hear about has one or another type of, um, you know, shoulder problem. Yeah, um, the, yeah. Go ahead. That is an uh, extremely common problem. During my practice as an orthopedic surgeon, I uh, uh, did fellowships uh, at the uh, uh, Mayo Clinic in adult reconstruction. I uh, did uh, focus my concentration on uh, the shoulder. Uh, so uh, somewhat of an uh, uh, interest in that particular field with sports and the injury. But mm -hmm. ironically, it is not through my practice of medicine nor my understanding of orthopedic surgery that led me to this particular discovery. It was all serendipity that happened about 15 years ago. My younger daughter at that time, she wanted to have a cat as a pet. But due okay. to my allergy as a, with cats, I really did not want to have a cat. But on the other hand, I did not want to disappoint her either. So I got her a bunch of cat toys. 
And then there was one particular cat toy with a plastic ball and the belly that I was uh, playing around with, uh, uh, rotating it, spinning it. I think I felt the kind of workout in my shoulder that was unlike any other type of shoulder exercises. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I started to think about my own patients and uh, all the forms of exercises at, at, at my my personal exercise. I try to stay fit and stay connected with different activities. I'm a tennis player. I do a lot of mountain biking, and I do general exercises, very familiar mm-hmm. uh, because of my sports medicine involvement. And then uh, I realized that shoulder exercise are really broken into two types. One type, which is what we all do uh, up until the discovery of this particular device, which I named it shoulder sphere, all the exercises that we do these days are traditionally based on four linear moves. We either push, pull, lift, or press. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Those are good exercises. There's nothing wrong with it. And with mm-hmm. a lot of that shoulder rehabilitation, <clears throat> after rotator cuff repair, after instability, labral repair, total shoulder, and so forth, we all do those mm-hmm. exercises. We pull rubber bands, we lift dumbbells, and, um, but, Just uh, ironically, with my discovery, I started to work on this project. So it was uh, 15 years in the making. First five years, I did not think of much of it, except I kept on thinking about the idea uh, that uh, that there has to be a different way of uh, rehabilitation and exercising. And then I did did so much research, uh, so it led me to get a patent. I I just pat on my own back saying, that well, I've accomplished something. I got a patent. I'm happy with it. (laughs) And then uh, I, I built prototypes for my own patient because I was convinced that this is uh, really the best way to rehabilitate the shoulder and do any kind of rotator cuff specific exercise for being mm-hmm. shoulder sphere really is the only device in the whole world. I can say that uh, hands down because I've traveled around the world and met thousands of individuals in the whole world that can focus isolation, rotator cuff exercise, all four muscles simultaneously treat them as a one functional unit at all times and in all directions of motion. So uh, it led to the development of prototypes and after prototypes, since I have uh, invested so much energy and time in, and resources into it. And then my girls, uh, of course, uh, fast forward 15 years later, you know, she's, <laughs> she's a second year college student. My older daughter is uh, graduating from physical therapy school. There's really no particular need for me to continue to work as an orthopedic surgeon doing, you know, although it's fun, it's great, but because of my passion in this uh, hobby, that led me to my clinical retirement in two years ago so that I can default full-time now. So right now, I I consider myself as a, a traveling person. I educate and train therapists, trainers, athletes, and uh, anybody around the world, basically. And uh, I see that your, your Instagram feed. And this morning, I got up early. I actually, I, I don't sleep because uh, my contacts are global. It's, uh, it's around the mm-hmm. night. I'm contact, connected with people in New Zealand, uh, India, wow. um, Spain, and UK uh, on this. Uh, so, so I enjoy that. Uh, so I... So my uh, focus is is to educate everyone who is interested in achieving a healthy and strong shoulder so that they may have less pain and perform better with no medication and no surgery. This is all via the device shoulder. That's amazing. I don't mean to interrupt you, but, um, yeah, I was – it's amazing that you that you discovered this after so many, you know, years of being – the shoulder surgeon, the discovery of this came from something as simple as a child's toy, and you know that that that's what a what a crazy uh, situation, you know. And then to find yourself now no longer being involved in, you know, in the profession that you're originally in, which is shoulder surgery, um, to full time, you know, devote yourself to this is is pretty. It's a pretty um, big change I imagine in your life um, was everyone like in your family supportive as far as like going going ahead and you know retiring from shoulder surgery and doing this full time <laughs> funny you should ask uh, my wife <laughs> unfortunately and girls have been very uh, supportive in the sense that mm-hmm. 
they tend to leave me alone uh, to do whatever I like <laughs> to do. So uh, I, I've been uh, very lucky. Uh, I That's do not good. have the, sh- the short leash that some people do. So uh, I've always good. enjoyed traveling. I, you know, and then in my first uh, 20, 15 years uh, of uh of my marriage and uh, with my kids, we did a lot of things, a ton of things as a family. So mm-hmm. well, we've done everything and anything that we uh, have always wanted to do. So there's really no more need for me to hang around and uh, just sticking sure. around. So they, sure. yeah, they're very lenient. They just say, yeah, just uh, go uh, enjoy your hobby. And uh, even though yeah. I'm retired, but I'm not retired from life, I continue right. to even more busy now because I'm constructing courses online for the physical therapist regarding the, uh, mm-hmm. the tomorrow's technique of shoulder rehabilitation because this is a, a unique concept. It's a complete paradigm shift. It's uh, it's a contra- uh, uh, contrary to all beliefs and all understanding of uh, shoulder exercises. And uh, whenever anybody first tries this, the immediate reflex is to hold on to something because we're all used to uh, grabbing onto something to shake it, to move it. We can muscle it out. We can uh, manhandle it. But this is that now you cannot do any of that. That's why my top level athletes that uh, they have said to me they're scared of it because uh, this is not something they can uh, slam hard like a 60 pound slam ball or uh, lifting mm-hmm. a click and jerk and a bench press. Because those things, they can just really, uh, yes, yeah. only age, uh, grunt it out. But this one, you just could not do anything. They have no choice but to isolate the rotator cuff, which is uh, the one and ever important structure in the shoulder. It is the the uh, the foundation for shoulder health. So, so I'm looking at the, uh, the study um, that you that you sent me prior to this podcast, and I, I see some of the graphs. So one of them is showing a Theraband um, exercise, which I guess is the more common way of how to rehab shoulders. Your invention circumvent this this type of right. Uh, and up until shoulder here, really uh, the foundation and the gold standard for any kind of a rehabilitation tool. Which, which I call the uh, years of uh, uh, BS before shoulder sphere. <laughs> That's in ADBC, you know, uh, before shoulder sphere days. Uh, what are the uh, tools that we had in terms of exercising? We had weights. That's gravity dependent. You know, whatever weights you want, dumbbells, uh, balls, right. or whatever. And then uh, something that's elastic because of technology. We invented the rubber band. You know, before that they had some spring-loaded devices. So those are the only two things that w- the world ever know about. That's something that mm-hmm. stretches and something that is weighty. So, uh, so those are the that's the foundation. So, and then uh, came about uh, 20 years ago, uh, a very smart gentleman uh, who in- invented uh, uh, what they call a perturbation oscillatory device called the body blade, which is extremely popular uh, uh, over the years. And uh, he was really the first one who uh, identified. Uh, the need of uh, the oscillatory principle in terms of uh, muscular training and rehabilitation. And then, uh, so that's all we have uh, right now. So everybody would uh, think immediately a body blade, a a rubber band, or a dumbbell as a workout. And then Mm -hmm. since the shoulder spear is such a a unique, different creature in its own category, so the only comparison that people make is that it doesn't do the same thing as the rubber bands, that doesn't do the same thing as the body blade or the shoulder tube or the, uh, the, the uh, whatever. So, so that's why uh, I had to convince myself with uh, needle EMG studies, even as a surgeon, you know, I wasn't really, uh, because when I first had this invention, I made prototypes, I was the only one in the whole world who felt that sensation. And then I had to prove it to myself that it really specifically targets the rotator cuff. So that's why, yeah. unfortunately, I was in the medical field. I had the neurologist <laughs> set up by the EMG studies and uh, identified mm-hmm. that exactly what I set out to identify. And then uh, about four years ago, a physical therapy student said, that a physical therapist now, <laughs> excuse me, they uh, did a, a, a two-year uh, research project on uh, comparing the uh, strength gain of the rotator cuff to the commonly uh, recognized devices such as the rubber band, the TheraBand. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it, so it does prove the fact that it does strengthen the rotator cuff just like uh, the other devices, but it's interesting it would be more efficient in terms of uh, 
can accomplish uh, basically the same results in less time. Of course, that is a pilot study. It would require further investigation with a different avenue sure. approach of the methodology. And uh, my Italian uh, physical therapy colleagues, uh, they uh, also were very interested in this. So they did a quite a bit of uh, surface EMG studies mm-hmm. comparing to their uh, body blade, to the uh, bands, and to the uh, dumbbells. And uh, with no question, they showed the uh, significantly more muscular activation to the rotator cuff muscles than the other devices. Yeah. So uh, the the, th- the interesting thing about this is, you know, I found, as I mentioned before, I saw Miriam uh, uh, Nakamoto using your device, and I thought, wow, what a what an interesting thing for for a shoulder. It's it, it looks so. Um, like you said, different from anything that I've seen before. So that, then that's how I, you know, researched you and found out who the owner is and who the inventor is and so forth, and that's how we're we're speaking right now. Um, do you feel like this is something that's only beneficial for, like, recovery purposes? Because that's kind of like what we're talking about right now. But what about someone who's at the moment, you know, is not having um, – shoulder problems. Is it, could this be used like as a prevention or anything like that? It is uh, excellent in three categories. One category, of course, obviously, for people who have suffered an injury or surgery, they want to have rehabilitation, uh, rotator cuff. That was my uh, original goal and intent in the rehabilitation mm-hmm. field. And then, of course, uh, with any kind of uh, exercise device, the uh, additional uh, population would be arm prevention, injury prevention, arm care, and the performance improvement. Because if you have a stronger rotator cuff, that leads to more stable shoulder. And more stable shoulder would lead to the ability for faster acceleration. Because acceleration, arm movement, is what all athletes are about. Mm-hmm. When you throw your uh, jab or your punch, the velocity of your right. arm movement is, uh, is uh, predicts the power of your punch. When the pitcher who pitches at 90 miles per hour, obviously different kind of power requirement than a 60 mile per hour pitch. Now, why <laughs> is it that when you have a stronger rotator cuff, that would allow you to pitch faster, throw faster, or have a more powerful punch because of increased stability? I imagine that uh, you have uh, your track of uh, uh, a star and uh, they have starting blocks before you run. The reason for starting blocks is that you have a stable platform you can push off from. Even with swimmers, they have a starting block <laughs> to jump into the pool. Uh, with uh, 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 with all the uh, the crooked pitchers and the fast bowlers and the pitchers, they understand the ground reaction force. So it's a sudden stopping of the foot that uh, creates the ground reaction force transfer of the body kinematic chain into the shoulder. And uh, if you uh, try to imagine that you, uh, the common example that everybody talks about is uh, shooting a cannon, a cannon in a, a canoe. The canoe mm-hmm. is unstable, and you're not going to want the, the force dissipates as opposed to shooting from a dry, uh, from a land. You have great right. state, more, more foundation. So when you have mm-hmm. stable foundation, the shoulder is a bit able to accelerate faster. So for sports performance, uh, that's uh, a huge uh, uh, area for people who want to lift heavier, want to throw faster, uh, want to punch fa- uh, harder, and so forth. And endurance, uh, for any kind of endurance of ping pong players, <laughs> have a team of it. Even though it's like a little ball doesn't look like they're doing anything, huge <laughs> amount of shoulder uh, problem. So it's for endurance, pistol shooters. Uh, for pistol shooters, where uh, the arm has to uh, be lifted uh, over uh, forward, where the weight of the pistol eventually fatigues on the rotator cuff, because that's what it all does. So the, uh, for, for sports, for, uh, for athletes, for performance improvement, definitely. So for rehab, for sports improvement. Third category, which is an interesting category, is what we call return to play. Anybody who's had an injury or surgery to the shoulder, after rehabilitation, after the, you know, BS days, you know, they, uh, they say, well, I'm strong now. I've thrown that and mm-hmm. slam ball, uh, 60 times and I want to go back to play. Mm-hmm. We can't go back to play. So the measure of assessment of a, whether an athlete can return to play is based on how strong they are right now. You know, whether you can stabilize, you can do push-ups and you can, uh, put what they call it, wide balance. You can move your hand from one side to another side. But that's only part of the equation because the ultimate failure and re-injury of the shoulder is not how strong that individual can throw the ball at this point. 
the ultimate injury is how the rotator cuff can stabilize the shoulder. Just like uh, I, you, you beat up your car, you get when you got your car back to the sh- car shop. The engine's repaired. You got a powerful engine to drive fast. Now, now what keeps a car on the on the road is your set of tires. We never have a bicycle tire for race cars, so you got to have a proportion that's bigger tires. The tire is the rotator cuff of the shoulder. So we neglect so it, manage the it, rotator it, cuff. Um, yeah, so is this why, like, we have so many times people re-tearing? You know, you, you'll have somebody go back into the sport or back into weightlifting, and a lot of times you hear that, oh, well, it's too early, that's why they re it. Do you think that the re-tearing of the muscles or re-injuring um, is because that the shoulder is not fully, like, recovered, it's not stabilized because it didn't go through the proper um proper recovery um, protocol? Well, there are two reasons for the so-called quote-unquote repair and re-injury. Uh, we're, we're talking about, of course, there are a lot of uh, surgeries and the stuff that's done in the shoulder. Let's just uh, uh, make one example of uh, you t- tore your rotator cuff tendon, now uh, you had surgery, you had it repaired. Okay, so now mm-hmm. we say, that, well, a person went back to test sports and he re You know, why did that happen? Uh, a number one uh, uh, issue is what my personal belief is in terms of proper rehabilitation of the rotator cuff in the shoulder sphere days and also return to sports assessment whether their rotator cuff is up to snuff to be able to meet the demands of the activity that they want to do. For instance, a pitcher, do you want to pitch one peak power velocity, one pitch at 90 miles per hour, be a closer? Or do you want to be a long endurance pitcher, 80 pitch counts at 85 mile per hour average? Those are uh, different uh, entities, and you have to train them differently. Just like that now with shoulder sphere, the concept is that finally you realize that if you plan to run a marathon, you train for the marathon. If you want to train for 100 meter sprint, you train for the 100 meter sprint. So, th- so th- that's uh, the most important issue uh, I want uh, all of your listeners to know is that uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know what you need to do, so you train for what you want to do. So that's uh, one reason why there's uh, uh, such a high failure, the re-injury rate, because my feeling is that because of lack of preparedness of the rotator cuff, it's either fails and fatigues over time. Over time, they were not able to assess that uh, before uh, the particular event. And number two reason is a uh, failure rate. Unfortunately, it is an unavoidable event because we know biologically in the body, if you have a broken bone with six bone to bone, they heal nice. If you have a torn muscle, we sew the muscle together, muscle to muscle, heal nice. If you tore the Achilles tendon, we sew the tendon to tendon, they heal nice. But rotator cuff, if the tendon separates from the bone, we have to sew the tendon back to the bone. We bury it in the bone. We secure it with anchors or screws or whatever method we want to use. Mm-hmm. And uh, you realize it's a two dissimilar materials. It is the healing tendon to bone, just like oil and vinegars don't mix. It is very difficult for two dissimilar substances in the body to adhere to each other. Just like if you glue a leather, a piece of leather to your wood, it's not going to really be as effective. But if you glue mm-hmm. wood, wood, they're solid. If you can glue a leather to leather, it's solid. But if you put the leather onto your piece of wood, wooden furniture, it takes a little bit of a while, and sometimes they, they fail just because they're dissimilar substances. Oil and vinegar don't mix. Unfortunately, that's why uh, the failure rate is uh, as high as thirty percent in all commerce. You know that 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 is also why I stress the importance of management without surgery. That mm-hmm. is important. We know that a lot of us, so-called "quote unquote" healthy people walking around, uh, they probably have uh, various levels of rotator cuff tear without even knowing that, and we know that people can coexist uh, quite nicely with a different degrees of problem. Of course, it depends on the individual, the goals and expectations. If you're a 20-year-old a pitcher, obviously a different kind of a management technique than a 55-year-old who is a recreational a basketball player and a swimmer. So, the, uh, so that's why uh, treatment and management is individualized. 
Yeah, I mean, that, it, it sounds like like you really like you really found something special. I'd love to try it. It's system, a whole new way of thinking with regard to the surgery, like a, a shift completely in a in a different direction. Have you gotten um, any kind of pushback from those using prior methods to heal uh, shoulder surgery or shoulder injuries? You mean uh, uh, resistance from using shoulder here? They prefer to use the rubber band and the uh, slime ball. Yeah, people in the medical profession. Um, what kind of responses have you gotten for uh, for having you know this idea of were they mostly supportive? Were they kind of pushing back? And- uh, that's a good question, and that was my initial concern because I was the only one who knew about this. But now I can speak with confidence because I have traveled around mm-hmm. the country, been to every state, I travel around the world, and with my own personal uh, networking of orthopedic surgeons and. Uh, physicians, physical therapists, and uh, trainers, and it's uh, 100%, 110% unanimous uh, endorsement that they just cannot believe huh? Anybody who understands anything about shoulder exercise immediately understands and knows about it. I mean, within the first 15 seconds of using it, it is a, a, a kind of mm-hmm. sensation that is a completely different from any kind of a shoulder exercise. And athletes, they love it too. Those people who, for whatever reason, they don't want to exercise. Of course, you have individuals who just don't want to exercise. Of course, the people who want to stay as a vegetarian, you're not going to convince them to eat steak. So, well, so they, you know, they're not into it, so they don't understand it, which is, uh, which is okay. But anybody who understands the exercise, there's really no reason, no reason at all for anybody not to use shoulder sphere. It's not they have to use shoulder sphere, but it's just another tool in the toolbox to allow mm-hmm. better complementary uh, workout for their knees. All the exercises that we do as athletes, he says, you know, even for baseball players, I've had num- a large number of baseball players use it, MLB, minor league, anything, you know, little league. Mm-hmm. All the exercises that we do, you know, with the, uh, the bands, uh, the, the heavy tosses, slam balls, uh, the uh, uh, the the, uh, the oscillatory devices uh, like this is shoulder tube and the body blade and so forth. They are accelerator training devices. In other words, you're training to have a better engine for your sports car. So which is good. Nothing wrong with that. But shoulder sphere is the only one that manages your tire. If you get mm-hmm. stronger, stronger shoulder throwing, because the throwing velocity has to do with how fast your arm moves forward. And we're front dominant creatures. So all the exercises make us go faster forward. But what's important is that do you have enough decelerator in the back part, specifically the rotator cuff, not the back muscles. Because that, that's why they, they do the bands and everything. They pull the bands backwards. They say, well, that's, a, you know, we're going to strengthen the muscles backwards. But you don't pitch by your arm moving backwards. You pitch by moving your arm forwards. And the, it is a, the subtle rotator cuff inside uh, underneath the big muscles, that has to do the braking. So, uh, so we train mm-hmm. the brake muscles by pulling backwards, w- which is okay, but but that what doesn't that's not meaningful for a person who throws forward. So that's why shoulder sphere is the only one that complements for the full rotator cuff workout. You know, a person can elect not to use it. It's not that they don't feel it helps them. Uh, everybody's different. So, uh, right, it's like. Some people like latte from Starbucks, and some people just don't like it. I would think that in those kind of exercises, using slam balls and weights and things of that nature, since you're gripping and you, you're using all of your arm muscles for that, are, would you agree? Like, are you, weren't you using your forearms, your biceps, your triceps, and not just shoulder? Is that correct? Yes. Yes, they are excellent exercise device for your core, for your balance, for your legs, for your arms. But the uh, shoulder sphere is a very different uh, animal. It's just only for rotator mm-hmm. cuff. But, you know, I don't uh, uh, claim that this builds your core or makes it your engine faster. It makes your brake better. That's all it does. And uh, that's, yeah. uh, I, I calculate uh, uh, via scientific method and the physics uh, in terms of uh, what is the braking strength that you need for the activity that you want to do. Because uh, you know, I, I, I know what is the power involved for 90 mile per hour pitch versus the 60 mile per hour pitch. And so you calculate the uh, musculature that is required for the braking muscle. 
So, so the, all those exercises are, are excellent, outstanding workouts. I, I do those myself. You know, I play tennis. I, I do the slam ball. I mean, it, it, it's fun to use. But unfortunately, you, uh, you have to balance it. It's the yin and the yang of the shoulder workout. You train all the yin, but without the yang, you may fail. That's why there's mm-hmm. such high injury rate. It's a dealer's choice. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that was my. I guess that was my uh, my point is that those exercises are using all the muscles, but but yours is isolates the sh- you know the shoulder cup you know by itself, which I would imagine would be even more beneficial for that area since it, it just goes to that aspect. What kind of nutrition like would you recommend for as along with? Is there any kind of supplements? Right. The subject of nutrition is. Um uh, very, very uh, big with uh, many, many, many experts. It's beyond my expertise. Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. I think anybody who uh, enjoys any kind of nutrition, who has uh, anything that's ever helped them, uh, is just continue the same. I myself am uh, uh, embarrassed to say I have terrible nutrition. I eat whatever I want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I went through a 10 year period of time where I gobbled a lot of different supplements, all kinds of shakes and vitamins and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And for a period of time, you know, I you know, I said, well, you know, uh, uh, magnesium, <laughs> manganese, you know, I lined them up. I, I you know, I, I read the books and all that stuff. I, I was into the, into all those trace mm-hmm. minerals. That, yeah, that, that, you know, the first uh, the 10 years of my uh, professional life, I graduated from uh, medical school, surgery. And I said, well, yeah, yeah, I got to do that. But for, interestingly, for a period of time, for whatever reason, I just was never able to uh, refill my supplements, quote unquote supplements. So for about the six months, I just kind of forgot about it. And then I said to myself, mm. "No, I really don't feel any different." <laughs> so I just <laughs> said, "Well, you know, that uh, saves me a hundred bucks a month." You know, I, I, <laughs> I just uh, keep on doing what I do because I, I forgot about it. I didn't feel any difference. I just keep on mm-hmm. doing what I did. Uh, so was my mom. Crazy how supplements have gotten so much more expensive, and it's such a such big business now, you know, on on its own. Um, I know that like a, a lot of times people, um, you know, in the general um, general sphere of things, uh, they talk about glucosamine in high doses, you know, helps with those kind of things. But I'm, you know, again, not not sure if any of that really is beneficial, or how can you even you know, how can you even determine if it's helping you or, you know, any of that? It seems like a very broad, like you said, uh, team, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, and then uh, for those people who swear by that, they swear by, for instance, my dad is 98 years old, 98. Mm-hmm. He takes probably 30 different uh, bottles of different kind of uh, trace elements every day. Mm-hmm. He's been doing that for that a lot. 30 years, every time I go visit him, he's at least lined up on the table. He tries to tell me, uh-huh. tell me that this is what, this is, he's 98, and that's a proof in the pudding. <laughs> but on the other hand, yeah, I know from my own professional, personal life, I have seen uh, quite a number of uh, tragic stories. I, uh, I, I, I have, uh, you know, for instance, one of my earliest experiences was like a, a woman in her early 30s, mother of two, and she was a mm-hmm. yoga instructor. She was a vegetarian. She was at the state of health. And she's on the, the cover magazine. I said, that, you know, she's fantastic. Comes in, you know, back pain. I mean, it just hurts a little bit. The like, well, it maybe rang a little bit too much. You know, you do this and mm-hmm. do that. It's kind of a little bit uh, unusual. And eventually got an MRI. It turns out that she had a metastatic breast cancer. And she oh, passed in another terrible. two years. I mean, uh, I, 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 I've seen those stories over and over and over again. So that's what led to my own personal uh, uh, in, uh, incredulousness to toward the uh, the nutritional supplement, and mm-hmm. also with the FDA, even with the government, even with the uh, the medication that's supposed to be helpful for you. For instance, the purpose that oxycontin, and they are like a uh, bad stuff, toxicity. And how of can course, you imagine yeah. that uh, those supplements were not monitored by the government? What do they have in there? How can you trust them? So even the stuff that the government does that, that sometimes they fool you and then they escape their detection. And then the, the things that they don't monitor, that's even going to fool you even more. My next door neighbor, right. you know, street guy uh, in his early 50s, and he's in a state of great health. And he was into the paleo diet. And he's a, I mean, that, that's a strong man. Fantastic shit. And then, uh, unfortunately, uh, three years ago, I uh, came down with ALS, and he passed mm-hmm. on home. 
So it's just like in spite of all you're doing, it's just unbelievable. Right. So, so, yeah. I, you know, so my personal conviction are three aspects for anyone's health. Number one, what God gave you first. So what your genetics, I said, I would say that's probably about 60% of the primary factor in your ultimate well-being. Because you mm-hmm. can do whatever you want to do in the Philippines and with no nutritional supplements, you can live on to uh, 98 if you want to. And then right. uh, genetics. Number two, do not do the bad stuff. You know, obviously, you know, if you smoke uh, three packs a day, if you drink uh, five shots of vodka a day, you know, uh, stupid stuff. So if you don't mm-hmm. step in front of the park, so avoiding the bad, that's probably another 30%. But the so-called doing the good, quote-unquote doing the good, probably only about 10% factor in terms of the ultimate, uh, the, the fate of an individual. You can uh, uh, gobble all the vitamins and supplements and do all the exercises. For instance, uh, yesterday, I, 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 I was on the uh, Stairmaster for, uh, for quite a while. I really had a great workout. I loved it. And then I, I was thinking to myself, you know, is this going to make my life longer? Probably not. Maybe die from cancer. You know, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so who knows? So it's a really genetically yeah. a place of... That's funny. Uh, That's funny. I was on the Stairmaster yesterday, too. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that's right. one of my favorite ones. That, that's the one that really gets, like, I feel like I get the most out of it as, as far as the gym is concerned. I mean, outside work uh, is, is obviously better, like biking and things of that nature. But um, but inside the gym, the stairmaster for me is like a big a big uh, help. Um, right, there's two types of stairmasters you got to be aware. One type is uh, uh, the really the drum roller where you step on it like a stair, and the width uh-huh. of that actually uh, may potentially hazardous for the knee because of the increased knee flushing angle. This is from my previous uh, life as a water so you uh-huh. have seen sure. these things. And there's another type of uh, stairmaster. It's called a, it's really a step master, where the uh, the pedal uh, you have to maintain the pedal afloat. But that, I feel, is a safer device because you take mm-hmm. shorter pumps. You have to maintain uh, the velocity of your pumping uh, to maintain the pedal mm-hmm. stuff from dropping down, if you understand what I mean. If you can picture yeah. that in your mind. Yeah. No, I just do. Yeah. Angle, uh, where you just a st- a step on it. So, so the stair that I like is the, the, uh, mm-hmm. the, the, the stepping kind. So along those lines, do you? What about running? Do you think running is 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 a, like? Do you think you can get as much benefit from other exercises like elliptical and that kind of stairmaster that you're referring to, and not run as far as cardiovascular, um, you know, benefit? Uh, or do you think running is is you know is the best way to go? I know that there's a lot of talk about how bad running is for your knees, especially on like concrete and things of that nature. Yeah, it really is an individual variation. There are two types of uh, exercises in uh, when you're talking about the lower extremity running type. One is that uh, you're carrying your own body weight when you run on the road. The other one is you're letting the machine absorb about 30% of the stress. For instance, I run on the treadmill at a, uh, you know eight minute mile pace. Completely different from the eight minute mile pace when you have to carry your own body weight on the road, mm-hmm. and everybody knows mm-hmm. that. And on the elliptical, same thing. You buy part of your work is absorbed by that. So for people who are blessed with uh, good joints and they're thin, they're not heavy, because we know that uh, there's a so, some uh, phenomenon called joint reactive force. So let's suppose you weigh 100 pounds, you stand still, so each leg absorbs 50 pounds. So we know there's a 50 pound of pressure going through the knee. But as you walk, because of the momentum, because of the motion, the motion creates more force. So with walking, you with every step, you increase uh, by another 50% of the joint reactive pressure. So, so if you're standing still, it's 50 pounds. And if you're walking at a slow pace, a uh, uh, 12-minute mile pace, you, uh, you go up to 75 pounds. Every time you step, the knee absorbs 75 pounds. The faster you go, the more the uh, the stress transfer, so up to about five to seven times of uh, the pressure. It depends on the, you know if you're a fast runner, five minute mile pace, you can uh, go uh, so to so fifty pounds. So that will be five times. So every step is a two hundred fifty pounds of pressure transmitted through across the knee joint. So the knee wow. joint diameter is about a, 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 about two inches, about an inch and a half. So that's a two inch uh, diameter circle 
and it was 200 pounds of pressure. So you're talking about 100 pounds per square inch of pressure. There's a thumb tack of pressure. Some people are, you know, we, we said it's amazing how the body can adapt to these changes that cartilage does not wear out. If you uh, pound something at 200 pounds, uh, per, at 100 pounds per square inch pressure, that any object you make, uh, your, your driveway, it's going to make a hole in it. But mm-hmm. our body, yeah. Is not, oh, and it's so good. It's, some people are very lucky genetic. That's why they're genetic. <laughs> that, that either they had but most of them are light. That uh, they, the, you know, the musculature, they have the, nothing. They never have any problems. They say, oh, I run great. I have uh, 60 year olds. They run the marathon. And then, uh, but other people, young people, they just even walking, they cause pain. So it's just really yeah. very. So you have. So the person really has to titrate. What are their goals and expectations? And do the activity that uh, is not going to cause them harm. So that comes down to. Don't do anything stupid. Don't do the, the harmful <laughs> thing. You're all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, to backtrack to the shoulder sphere, um, does it – so increasing the stability of the shoulder, does it uh, reduce the mobility? Because I know that – and, you know, I'm not I'm not in that field, but I, I feel like I've heard somewhere where the sh- – Strength and mobility are almost opposite of each other. When you increase the strength and stability, you you decrease mobility of and, and the flexibility of the joint. Is that correct? Ah, so that is an excellent point. There's a difference between mobility and the stiffness. The shoulder is uh, an unusual joint in the body. It is the joint with no bony socket around it. So the only structure that holds it in position are these four rotator cuff muscles. The outcrop from the back, from the scapula and from the, uh, of your body, and the ex, uh, go out toward the top part of your arm like, like a hand. So the function mm-hmm. of the rotator cuff is like a hand that grabs onto the top of the shoulder joint. Now, mobility and stiffness, uh, there's a kind of, uh, with stiffness, we're talking about uh, uh, immobility, but you want the, the shoulder is like a, it's a, it's a mobile joint. It's like a, the length of the octopus that grasps onto the top of your shoulder, allowing your arm to move to have the pliability for you to move while maintaining the check rate. If you can uh, picture that in your mind, like a ball is mm-hmm. rotating. And the legs of the octopus is grabbing onto it. So the, so the, so the, the, the legs have to respond. That is the key. Be responsive for changes in position of your hand through space. As your hand moves from 12 o'clock like a, uh, to a 9 o'clock position, the front part has, and the back part muscles have to tighten and contract simultaneously to adjust with every millimeter of movement. So stiffness, mm-hmm. we're talking about it's, uh, just staying in one position. You don't move. But we, we, we have motion. So that is exactly why, if you look at uh, the, you know my videos on Instagram or uh, on the right. website, the uh, sports uh, 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 motor pattern simulation technique, because you're training as a pitcher. You move through the movement as if you're a pitcher. You're training the engagement of the rotator cuff to maintain stability of the shoulder throughout that range of motion. You align the motion while you align the flexibility. That is the most important function of the rotator cuff. It is not Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, keep your arm just stay still, uh, no motion. It allows motion while providing stability. I see. I see. Ability um, will will not suffer by strengthening your uh, your shoulder um, cuff with using the, the shoulder sphere. Yeah, it's not just strengthening in one direction. You have to you have to understand to strengthen in as the arm moves. So you're teaching uh, just like if you're riding a horse, the check rein. You you you're going around figure of eight. So the, you know the we, we, the check rein makes it very stable. So we you know so you don't fall off. The horse is well controlled. It does not right. negate the process of a horse running the figure of eight. Uh, circle, but you have to teach which hand and how much pressure to exert as the horse makes left, makes right, makes left, makes right. So you have to teach the rotator cuff engagement. It's exactly like that in the shoulder, and that is why all the uh, BS type of exercises fail to do that. You know, they they just keep on going one direction, they keep on going the right direction. You know, I throw to the back. You know, which are 
generally good exercises, but if you are, with any movement in the show, in the arm, 70 muscles come into play, but only four of them, four of the 17, are comprised of the stability muscles, the rotator cuff tendon. So whenever we move the arm, it's a, a, approximately a 20% to 80% ratio. So if you, let's say that you lift a, uh, do a shoulder press of a 20-pound dumbbell overhead, yes, you do strengthen your rotator cuff, but 80% of the pressure is toward the prime movers, 20%, uh, you, you know, the, the, which we just is a rough calculation to your rotator cuff. But mm. this is always 80 to 20 disadvantage. So when you exceed the ability of the rotator cuff to stay engaged at 100 pounds, uh, 80 pounds and 20, 200 pounds, uh, uh, 40 pounds, and then and so forth, the rotator cuff reaches a critical threshold limit where it's just going to give out. But shoulder sphere puts a spotlight on the rotator cuff. It reverses uh, the uh, the exercise. In other words, if you uh, push it uh, 100 pounds, 80 go to the primary movers, 20% go to the uh, shoulders, uh, go to the rotator cuff. But the shoulder sphere workout, it reverses the concentration. 80% or 100% mm. nearly goes to the rotator cuff while you eliminate the prime movers. So that's how you can isolate. Why is that good? Because it's called efficiency of exercise. That's exactly what the study was doing. Because we, you want to uh, accomplish twice as much in half amount of time. And you want to do what you want to set out to do. It's a focus, attention, it's the efficiency of workout. In one minute of a shoulder skill workout, it's better and the superior, safer than 20 minutes of pulling rubber bands. You can pull rubber bands, which is nothing wrong with that. You can pull rubber bands for 20 minutes, but you're, it's only 80, 20, only 20% of the pressure goes through. You can pull 20 t- for 20 minutes, and then you, you do gain some strength. But with shoulder sphere, number one, you're training for the motor pattern, the uh, if, uh, simulation move. For the, if you're a swimmer, if you're a golfer, you train for the activity that you want to train. You train for the uh, reflexiveness and the engagement of rotator cuff for the activity. And then you focus uh, nearly 100% of your uh, power training to the rotator cuff. So in a one-minute workout, it, 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 you're done. It, it's unbelievable. What, what is, the pro, is there a protocol for the use of the shoulder sphere as far as time, um, as far as the amount of sessions? Uh, do you recommend uh, like any any kind of protocol when when someone you know starts using the shoulder sphere? Yes, I have a, a lot of uh, programs on the website delineated to either you're a therapy candidate or you are an athletic candidate. If you're a therapy candidate, a lot of the physical therapy facilities uh, in the country now use it, and I have uh, many instructors uh, regarding the, what they call that, different phases of recovery after injury. Mm-hmm. So I have a program that's written out. And then the, let's suppose that you're a baseball pitcher, and depends on what you want to do, I have a program written out. I have uh, uh, big wave surfers in Hawaii, and uh, I calculate what is the force involved to swim in the, in the ocean and how many uh, strokes you need. So they have a workout. So well, for the, the, a lot of volleyball players, so on the website, there are programs that is geared toward any kind of, kind of individual. And then for okay. just general exercises for therapy programs, they have all that. Okay. So, so a bit based upon your goal is that, you know, the use changes. Uh, based on one's goal, uh, yeah. So, the, so the, the individual can titrate. So the beauty of a shoulder sphere is that uh, you don't. It's portable. It's light. It's only seven ounces, and uh, mathematically calculate this is equivalent to a seventy-pound kettlebell workout for Turkish get-up. And, and mm-hmm. actually, even the more power and more work involved. In it. So it's just all. Um, I believe it's on the on, on my Instagram and on my website also that I talked mm-hmm. about the math behind it. So uh, um, and also the person. Uh, no longer can uh, was wonder whether you're exercising rotator cuff or not because you immediately feel as long as the ball rotates, all your rotator cuff muscles are engaged. Now they're like uh, pulling the bands a lot of times. Am I really uh, exercising my rotator cuff? I'm getting a good shoulder workout. Yeah, you know it's great, but with shoulder speed, there's no question about it. You you know if the if the ball doesn't spin, you're not uh, rotating your rotator cuff <laughs> because only the rotator cuff can rotate while inside. And you can, uh, the person can create their own 
uh, techniques and your own program. So it's a completely uh, multi-directional, multi-use device that you just have to be imaginative. Your workhouse is limited by your imagination. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's so amazing. I mean, you definitely you sold me on it. That's for sure. It's a, I mean, it's a great idea, and it, it seems like it would be so beneficial to so many people. Um, you know, the shoulder injury rate is so high now with with athletes, and you know, even even people that are not athletes, they're just training for their own uh, personal satisfaction. They're, everyone seems to be pushing themselves harder and harder, and it's like the more you do that the more injury you're going to have, and a lot of times it's, it's with the shoulders. It's knees and shoulders is what I always hear and see, knees and shoulders. So this would definitely be a huge benefit for someone to, you know, add that to their toolbox, like you said. But what about the future as far as is there going to be other versions of it? Um, is there – are there other versions, or is it just one version of the, of the shoulder sphere? Well, thank you. For, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for your kind uh, remarks. And, uh, of course, that is my intention uh, to uh, have this as a fantastically beneficial uh, tool for anybody who is interested in any kind of a shoulder mm-hmm. activity. And um, the people would know that it is immensely helpful. Yes, I am in the development phase of my Generation 2 power tracker because, as you, as you know, on the shoulder sphere currently, there is, uh, this is the only device, again, in the world with a power tracking capability. It tracks the power. So this way I can tell you exactly whether you're capable of uh, throwing a 90 mile per hour pitch or a 60 mile per hour pitch. Not that whether you can do it or not, whether you have the tire capable of keeping the car on the road when you throw that. <laughs> and this measures the power. My generation two is a gear toward this is a 21st century. <laughs> we no longer uh, throw rocks or pull rubber bands or uh, lifting weights anymore. This is the digital age. We mm-hmm. can download the information to the computer. And uh, everything is a telehealth and telemedicine in the future. So uh, the, as a telecom, as Apple and the Google with Fitbit, they are, mm-hmm. everybody's involved with uh, artificial intelligence, with the Internet of Things. And this device, uh, what, uh, uh, what it will do as a next generation in development is that you can download the information of your workout into your computer, cloud storage, and then you can uh, personalize uh, the uh, type of workout that you need. And uh, remotely, the healthcare taker can advise different kinds of workouts with uh, artificial intelligence. Because we're talking about science fiction. It's really not science fiction anymore. This is the f- future is here today. This yeah. is the digital age. So the, the workout, yeah. I, and uh, so it's so based on the record that you did, for instance, uh, again, you know, using a picture that you want to pitch uh, 80 pitches at 80 miles per hour. I know the total work that is involved. That's a simple math. We can calculate that. And I suppose that you want to do a peak velocity pitch of 90 miles per hour. How many times do you want to do that? Well, maybe five times. So I can give you an app. This is an app. Boom. This is what you, I know you're going to run this marathon. This is the way you train for the marathon to be ready. And I, 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 there's no question about it. It's going to be digitized. It's going to be a computer readout. It's math. It's math. It's math. Whether your car can go at 45 miles per hour now, I, I know. If you cannot uh, fulfill the requirement, you go on the mound and uh, I'll see you in the operating room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so there's, there's just no way around it. So there's that, yeah. that, is, that is the future. The future is uh, digitalization on the personalized uh, workout technique. That's, that's beautiful. That's, that would be a, that would be huge, you know, because like you said, everything is now digital. Do you have a time frame for that or it's just in the development phase right now? Uh, well, you know, if any of your audiences, uh, they want to uh, have a VC involvement because I'm in talk with a few venture capitalists, uh, like your shark uh-huh. tankish uh, type of people. Uh, they, I'm not on TV, so I have nothing like that, but this is like the real world stuff. So I'm in talks with uh, that. I, so there's a, a significant amount of funding that is involved. Uh, it's just sure. it's simple sure. stuff. It's not rocket science. It's not like uh, Elon Musk blowing up uh, the rocket ship, you know, going to space. <laughs> it's very difficult. But with 
what I'm uh, doing is uh, very simple and easy, but does require some resources, which uh, I unfortunately, uh, uh, my wife would not like it if I <laughs> take out you more money. Use your own that. personal money. <laughs> you don't <laughs> want to take a loan out. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, so I can, uh, I, I reach out to your audience. Anybody who uh, wants to be involved, you know, I don't, what do they call it? Uh, uh, startup, uh, 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 yeah, startup companies, yeah, yeah, that was true. Uh, uh, yeah, like a, like a early asking for a donation and stuff like that. Uh-huh. I, I'm not savvy doing that, so I haven't done that yet. But I'm in talks with uh, some of the serious people who may yeah. uh, do that. So if anybody who has money, uh, send it my way. You know, come <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to develop the future. Party, I think party, you Elon Musk. Have- yeah, I think you definitely will have uh, people, in, you know, interested in, in sponsoring or giving donations for that because I think that's that's such a such an interesting thing that everyone will have a benefit from. And you, you know, you have, you, I mean, you have the regular people that don't work out that have shoulder problems, and then of course all the athletes, you know, that you're dealing with, they're going to want, um, you know, support of, of their shoulder cuff even if they're not injured at that time. So, uh, but yeah, so I think you, you're you're in good shape. Um, but it's but it's interesting how how that um, somebody like Elon Musk, <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna send a shoulder sphere in space anytime soon. Uh, actually, you actually, you know, it's interesting. In fact, I have talked to a number of people in NASA when I was in Texas. Yes, uh, for micro G exercise. Right now, if you look at the astronauts in space station, what kind of exercise they do, they, you know, they ride the bike, and then it's uh, unfortunate, in my mind, it's kind of archaic. They have vacuum tube type of uh, pulling, pushing stuff mm-hmm. for their upper extremity exercises. And shoulder sphere is not gravity dependent. We're using centripetal force. It's uh, hmm. small and easy to carry, and they can, and, the, and the, we know the astronauts are staying in space for two weeks of uh, micro-G environment. They lose uh, almost 50% of their muscle mass when they come down to Earth. Now, how is it going to be detrimental to your shoulder performance? Because uh, uh, the, when you lift anything, it requires uh, X amount of uh, total strength. That's 100 pounds. And then, but hmm. when you're, uh, when you deteriorate muscle down to 50 uh, pounds, then, uh, but the prime movers are still strong enough to move. But the shoulder, uh, but the rotator cuff, as you know, it's only 20%. So it'll decrease proportionally below the critical threshold level where you would be able to stabilize the shoulder. So by simply by moving your arm up with no weight, so when you're standing still, we know that you know we have calculated the force from your hand from the side pocket go all the way to the horizontal. Let's say to raise it halfway up. That requires your body weight equivalent pressure in your rotator cuff to stabilize the shoulder to engage it. It's an incredible amount of uh, biomechanical force. Let's suppose that you mm. weigh 100 pounds. You're lifting your arm up. We're talking about 100 pounds of pulling pressure in rotator cuff. But if you're in space, you lose uh, 50%. You, you down to 50 pounds of the build capability. You do not have the gas reserve to lift halfway up because you need 100 pounds to pull up, and you don't have 50 pounds of reserve. And that's when you have a weak shoulders, pain, and then uh, you know, and go to the doctor's mm. office. <laughs> I never, I never even thought about uh, astronauts. That, that's uh, that's definitely interesting because you know we're thinking, always thinking down here on this earth. Huh? But yeah, astronauts they, I mean they, they would definitely benefit from this. Like you said, they're they're losing all, you know, their, their muscles are atrophying while they're up there. And now, you know, I don't know if they're gonna still be uh, doing longer uh, space. You know, sessions or, or trips, but on a, especially on the longer ones, I think they'll be, you know, really beneficial. I remember when I was a kid and um, I saw the videos um, of. It was, I was born in Russia in the Soviet Union, and I saw videos of Yuri Gagarin, who was the first man in space. And when they pulled him out, he he, he couldn't even walk. And when I was a kid, I didn't yeah. understand what was what was going on. But it's yeah. uh, uh, it's intense yeah. up there. Completely wobbly, but even on Earth, you know, after my cross country ride, sometimes I manhandle, I push for four straight hours of driving. When you first get out, you can hardly move around. How often do you do like uh, do you do you enter like marathons and things of that nature, uh, bike competitions? Do you do that often? Oh, all my personal uh, engagements. Uh, the, right. I, the, the, recently, yeah, I, I played uh, intermittently. I played some tennis as my 
cardio and fun workout. Uh-huh. And I do uh, mountain biking. I, I fortunately, I live in an area where there's access to different trail ride, uh, rides. I used to ride on the road, but I find that to be very hazardous. It's not, you know, if I fall down in the mountain, it's uh, the rock's fault. It's my fault. It's not the car's fault. <laughs> right, so, right. Yeah. So, you, know, <laughs> you don't so. want to be a target of those crazy drivers. Yeah, yeah. So, and then the sofa, but, but nowadays I'm pretty busy with, uh, you know, as, as you know, with my shoulder fear stuff. So I, 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 I do some general baseline workouts. As far as for the shoulder fear workouts, in, in, initially I was just so enthused with it. I was doing that every day almost. And then, uh, you know, I, I gave myself a beating. I was doing the uh, bad stuff. Because I overtrained, mm-hmm. I felt that shoulder pain. So now, you know, I have uh, achieved a, a high level enough that I know can, uh, for instance, I get onto the tennis courts maybe in the winter time. I, I try to get on up more often, but sometimes I would go for maybe two months mm-hmm. without playing tennis. But during my shoulder sphere, when I get back onto the courts, my backhand can be just as strong. I do not feel mm-hmm. any shoulder fatigability because I have maintained the strength. So now I just do a maintenance. I do it maybe uh, once a week or twice a week. That's about it. And hmm. uh, that makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's become more of a, of a hobby and now, that, now that you're so focused on, on this business that you've got going. Uh, so what's um, – where's the, the shoulder strip <clears throat> made, excuse me? Well, where do you guys, you know, put it together, make it? Do you have a factory in the U.S., out of the U.S.? I have uh, – uh, unfortunately, I did start out in the U.S., but uh, – Unfortunately, after about nine months of uh, really struggling with a variety of factors, uh, they were not able to manufacture it. It's not that mm-hmm. they don't want to or I don't have the funding. They cannot manufacture, make it the way that I have the it you in want. my mind, mm-hmm. my concept of what it should look like, how it should feel. So it's not until my other discoveries, actually, the uh, how to make it is another proprietary type of thing. And so, so unfortunately, I met some people and so forth. But about, uh, long story short, currently it's manufactured by no less than uh, six to ten factories in in China. I think all okay. places. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, it's, it's yeah, it's expensive. If I can make it in the U.S., I would definitely do it. No, no problem. Yeah. But it's just unable to do it. You know that incredible. Yeah. Technology. You gotta. I mean, you, you want to do it. The whole point of it is to get it done your way, especially since this is a completely new product. And you know, if they if they can't do it to your specifications, then then there's really no point in even you know even attempting at that point. Yeah, if they're industrialists or uh, Mr. Donald Trump or whatever, you know, if you can get me a factory, we can make it. Uh, uh, <laughs> Actually, here I'll do it, but they could not. Technology, unbelievable! It's it, it's just like another invention. I had to invent the way to do it, and then the, in China right. they were able to do it. <laughs> and yeah, if you look right. at it, it's simple, but it's a very very complex how to get it. And it I, no one uh, would know how to make it. You know, I, they just thought, oh, you go ahead and make it. Maybe I'm sure there's very very smart people out there, and so I I, I have not tapped all the resources, but. Uh, but people, I'm yeah. sure they can have a much better version, much improved their stuff. But that takes resources. But with again, you have to think about uh, when I first started with my limited funds. You know what I have to make, whatever I could get to the, and it's, sure. you know, sure. they just have to do it. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, hey, China is a great place. They've, they've got some real, you know, some real geniuses there for sure. Um, you know, it's not where it is because. You know, it, it's obviously in a place in the world because there's a lot of smart people there. So, and a lot of people do business, you know, there. So, do you do you get to travel there often? Yeah, I, I've been there several times. Sure, I travel around the world. That was, you know, for the first uh, year, I traveled extensively because I wanted to prove myself that the rest of the world, you know, we're talking about different high levels of athletes. I've been to Iceland. I've been to uh, the CrossFit, the world's largest CrossFit center with uh, uh, with mm-hmm. Annie Star's daughters, the center, you know, the CrossFit athletes. I've been to Italy, to Spain, UK, China, Beijing with uh, uh, the Olympic swimmers. Uh, and then uh, so the, the the feedback is unanimous that this is uh, just an unbelievable device. It's, it's extremely challenging, yeah. even in the strongest of individuals. I uh, sent you uh, a DM because I saw that you have an Instagram feed. So what's yeah. here at, at the, the Arnold show? So what I I've been there several times, and oh. it's just, yeah, I've been there many times. Are you, are, and 
do you think you're, you think you're going to be there um, this upcoming year in March, or are you going to be too busy? Uh, in March, actually, I'm uh, I'll be in Turkey. I'm I'm with the uh, the oh, okay. world, the, uh, the International Orthopedic Shoulder Study Group. Actually, I'll be presenting oh. my studies in in Turkey uh, at that oh, time. That's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I you know won't be able to see you, but um, well, hey, when uh, what's what's the best way uh, for somebody to contact you? Um, just kind of give out your you know plug in your contact information. And, um, you know, if anybody wants to reach out for, like you said, venture capitalists, or um, if somebody wants to purchase a, a shoulder sphere, where would they go? Uh, the easiest way and most reliable way of getting hold of me is just directly to my personal email. I have no qualms with that. WinChangMD at gmail.com. Uh, that is mm-hmm. also can be found on the website, www shouldershere.com, uh, uh, so all the information is on there, easily reachable. I'm on Instagram and uh, uh, on Twitter, Facebook. I don't use Facebook that often, but uh, I'm, mm-hmm. uh, I'm on Twitter and uh, on Instagram all the time. Uh, and then, again, uh, as a plug, if uh, any viewers like Apple or Google or Fitbit or Peloton or anybody, this is a chunk change for any kind of investment for an immensely revolutionary uh, future for the rotator cuff. This is the only device that can incorporate the digitalization, the Internet of Things for shoulder management. Mm-hmm. Where, where would they get the device? Where, If someone wanted yeah, to buy the device? You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Amazon or our website. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. We did over an hour. I know you you're a busy guy, so I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, let you go. But thank you again uh taking the time out of your day and talking about your revolutionary invention and yourself as a person. Um, if you're ever in uh, Nashville, uh, let me know again. I know you did a, you did something in Vanderbilt recently, but if next time you come by and you have some time, um, you know, either call me or send me an email. Maybe we can um, grab some something to eat or something like that. Hey, Omer, thank you so much. It is an honor and a pleasure to be on your show, the excellent, outstanding uh, podcast, and I love your podcast, I, 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 especially the first one, the Inception podcast. I listen to it uh, uh, two times now. And then, in fact, I will I will be in Nashville. I will be in Nashville January 2nd for the first week. I'm with the ADA meeting, the American Baseball Coaches Association meeting, Go there every year. All the baseball coaches, anybody who's involved baseball, they they see shoulders here there. So I'll, I'll be there, and yeah. you have my contact number. So if you you, you know where the convention center, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, right. you're not. Wait, I, I'm at the um, uh, uh, what's that? The, the big hotel, the uh, uh, famous hotel out there. Well, um, there's a couple of them. Um, are you yeah, talking about the one in Opry? Are you talking Opry, about Opry? Opry. Yes, yes. Opry. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not far from me. That's um, about 20 minutes. That's not too far. Okay. So, uh, no, so we'll be in touch. Yeah. I'm out we'll there. Know. Okay. Right. Armin, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.